I persecuted the church because I did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus. At the church was a false group of people spreading false teachings, false faith, leading people astray from God. But to a person like that, to me, this Jesus appeared to me and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. This Jesus appeared to me and instead of punishing me, Instead of destroying my life, who will try to destroy the church in judgment, he said that he extended his grace to me. So Paul says here, by grace, I am what I am. His life story itself is the testimony of the risen Christ and his grace. but you do not have only their testimonies. You, my brothers and sisters, are surrounded by the people. Even here in this room, those who will testify that to you, how God changed their lives in Christ Jesus. We have never seen Jesus with our eyes. But those people's s t o r y are the living testimony that he lives today and he changes us. What he confessed is similar to what Paul says here. This is what John Newton says. I am not what I ought to be. I am not what I want to be. I am not what one day I will be. But I am not what I once was. By the grace of God, I am what I am. I am not what I want to be like. I am not today what I will be like. What I'm not, I must be the person that I need to be and must be. I am not, but I am not what I was like before. I am what I am by the grace of God. Is that your testimony? Whatever I went through, He always provided. Whenever I feel like it is short, how am I going to make this month and this? Oh, He always provided. He always provided faithfully. He provided how He answered my prayer, how He speak to me, how He protect us, how He rebuked us, how He encouraged us. Jesus Christ, though we cannot see Him with our eyes, but my life story is full of His work. I did not see it at the moment, but as I look back and I see his fingerprints all over, all over. And he said to them, O foolish ones, And slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Pause. Oh, foolish ones. And slow of heart to believe. This is a strong expression of emotion. This is a strong rebuke. And here Jesus did not rebuke. Even on, how come they did not believe in the woman's testimony? How come you don't believe your fellow woman's words? No word. Jesus did not rebuke them. How come you don't believe your other disciples' testimony? No word. How come you don't believe the message of the the angels? The angels said it. No word. How come you don't learn from this strange phenomena what happened there? Empty tomb, even though it was guarded by the Roman soldiers, and you still don't believe that? That is not where Jesus was taking them to. You see? Jesus' rebuke was not, how come you don't believe the people's testimony? What you see, what happened, or even the angels? No. His key point was this. Why can't you believe the Bible? 
Why can't you believe the Bible? What God said through the prophet. What amazed Jesus is how they failed to believe the word of God. Not that they failed to believe the testimony of a woman or other disciples or even the angels or the empty tomb. Verse 26. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scripture the things concerning himself. He showed one by one in the scriptures how these things were according to the scripture. According to the scripture, all those things were anticipated, prophesied. And one by one, all of them were fulfilled exactly. And you don't believe the word of God? Wait, isn't it strange? Think with me, my friends. Isn't that strange? No need to do that. He could have just shown and rebuilt himself. Ta-da! I'm Jesus. I'm alive. You see, touch my hands. Look at my side. See my feet. Now you believe in the resurrection? I'm done here. Let me go. That's going to be easy and quick. I mean, he doesn't have to go through the passage after passage of the Bible explaining. It's like, now do you believe in the resurrection? Believe. Good. I'm done. Well, he did that to Thomas, right? A week later, Jesus appeared to Thomas and said, Touch, now you believe. You believe because you have sinned. But it is more blessed to believe without seeing. Brothers, sisters, remember what I'm saying here. What will be Jesus' normal, general way to cause someone to believe in his resurrection? By showing? No, this is how he works. By showing. turning their attention to the scripture and by opening the word of God to their hearts. He said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scripture? As he opens the scripture to you, as he did to these two disciples, and you learn and you understand it. And it is not Billy, it is not just him, it is not her, it is the Lord. He's opening up the scripture to me and causing me to believe. I see. I get it. Didn't he do that to you, my brothers and sisters? Isn't that how you...